Hey, welcome back to Wanderlust Bunch. We're currently getting ready for our next trip, getting the camper all ready. So we're headed to Fort DeSoto. We got the bikes loaded up. So we gotta make sure we have everything. So let's go check it out. Soto. Uh, Fort DeSoto in Pinellas County is, is uh, really, really sought after, sought after campground for the Tampa Bay area. We go there quite often. Someone, someone was talking to one of my friends today and they said, you know, oh, you, you've been there before, right? I said, we go there probably about once a month. So we go there very often. Uh, when the right site comes up, then, then we, we grab it. And so uh, this is for Jessica's and Everett's birthday, just to get away, uh, get out, uh, do some camping, so that's what we're going there for. So, uh, got everything loaded up uh, on our way. Uh, we'll show you once we get closer. Uh, once you get get to this part of Pinellas County, it is, it is like the furthest southern point uh, of Pinellas County. So, uh, you got great views there, great waterways. Uh, there's the Sunshine Skyway out that way, so it's, it's really nice. arrived at Fort DeSoto so uh, we are in site number 166 so we are right on the water uh, so we'll show you a little bit uh, more about this but we are in what's known as uh, area 2 oh, there's three areas area 1 is tents pop-ups area 2 is uh, the other side and then area 3 is uh, on the other side more like inland there are some sites on the water but uh, that's where you're allowed to have pets versus area one and two you're not allowed to have pets so uh, we're over here getting set up right now parker's over by the water so i'm gonna go ahead and and set up the camera and show you a quick time lapse of what it's like getting all this stuff set up set up here at Fort DeSoto got everything behind we showed you a little bit of footage uh, getting everything all set up uh, so we've got some things that we're gonna do talking specifically uh, kind of like you know ours is an extendable or hybrid camper so uh, I did get some footage of setting those up I think the camera got actually too hot uh, setting up uh, the front one uh, and I didn't realize it of course so uh, this is our site right here this is right on the water, so I like this side. This side's pretty pretty convenient. You know, it's a nice view right here uh, versus the other side. 
the, the field of view is a little bit more narrow as far as uh, where, where you can see the water. Uh, there's more trees. So this is a lot more open. Uh, I, I think it's a lot better view. So we'll see. We're going to go walk over to the registration office, go get checked in because there were so many people over there uh, when we got here. So we're going to go do that now and then go check out the camp store and go get some ice cream. All that stuff is right behind me right there. So pretty close. We're going to walk on over. Down here at the, uh, this is the, the East Beach at Fort DeSoto. And this is probably my favorite area. Uh, there, there's, uh, on, normally in the mornings there's kite surfing, I believe, that are out here, like parasailers and stuff. It's pretty shallow water and, and behind, you probably can't see it, but what's lit up over there, that's the Skyway. So they've got it lit up with LEDs. Uh, but this is probably my favorite area, and I don't know if I've ever seen it so calm. So we took some really cool pictures. We'll make sure to share those uh, in the video. You can check those out uh, as far as like reflection pictures and stuff with the sunset. So turned out pretty cool. Got the moon out right now. So little baby, little baby Everett. So just take a look around. So this is definitely one of the highlight areas here at Fort DeSoto. So one of my favorite areas to come to. So normally not very many people, not necessarily something like you can swim, but it's pretty shallow for quite a ways out there. Like that's why the, the kite surfing, the parasailing is so popular out here because if you, if you crash into the water, you fall off, whatever, you're in a couple of feet of water. And it's like that pretty far. So, all right, we're going to get back to the campsite. Uh, we will see you guys in the morning. I've got lots to do, uh, but we'll record more video tomorrow. Uh, we've been out and about here, uh, so we will see you guys in the morning.
day two. So it's actually day two, almost in the afternoon. We should have some footage of a uh, of Jessica and the boys going to the beach, but I had some things to do back in Tampa this morning, so I just got back uh, probably a little bit after lunch. So we're coming down. Uh, Jessica's mother is with us, and so she's. I don't think she's been to Fort DeSoto, so we came down here. Uh, you would have seen footage from uh, when we were here uh, near the Skyway. We took some pictures, and now we're out here again, and it's low tide, so the tide is all the way out there. What my wife reminded me of is this is actually the second version of the Skyway. The first Skyway bridge collapsed in 1980 due to a freighter hitting it. Uh, we believe it was due to visibility issues. And about a thousand foot section of the bridge collapsed and had probably probably 30 plus lives that were lost uh, during that accident. So it was a pretty major, major deal that happened uh, here in Tampa. And they have parts of the old bridge, the flat parts, uh, that are actually opened as a fishing pier. So you can go to either side, uh, pay a couple of dollars, and then go out there and go fishing. Uh, pretty cool experience. We've done it before. But we got the Skyway out here, and we'll post a couple of, of photos that we did. They're actually painting the cables to it right now. Uh, so they, they do that every, every so often. Uh, but I think they've been doing it for a couple of months. They're painting it yellow they have these big car carriages that ride up the cable and they uh, sandblast it and then they repaint it so they're working on that right now so all right now we're going to go head over to the fort and show you that we decided to go over to the fort and check that out uh, pretty much every time we've gone to fort Soto, we always go over to the fort and walk around and check everything out uh, so the fort was built in 1898 by United States Army Corps of Engineer. Uh, it was made of reinforced concrete during the Spanish-American War. So we're going to fast forward here uh, and get up onto the top of the fort. They have this platform up there. Uh, but basically the bank, it looks all natural. So enemy ships that came in, they didn't know that there was a fort there. And so they had different lookouts and towers that were set up that they could see out uh, and see if any enemy ships were approaching uh, as far as that area was concerned. And then they had these giant mortars, which we'll see a little bit more down below when we go down there. Uh, but the lookout is a great view of, of really the whole area. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to see out in the water. And this is really where you can tell how big the area is uh, and I told you earlier that really there's so much beach area that you most likely won't see a lot of people uh, or it won't be crowded as some of the Florida beaches are known to be so this was basically the battery wall and it was uh, pretty cool uh, they keep it in good shape so we normally just walk around and then we go down into the actual fort part part into where they've got some of the guns mounted uh, so what's pretty cool about this is the guns that they have uh, here are two 12 inch coastal defense mortars of battery Laidley. The battery originally had eight of these guns, two in each pit. These guns are in pit A and these are the only type within the entire United States and they're on display there. They keep them in really good shape. They took a lot of components off obviously and what we're walking out to now is actually some of the uh, the guns that were mounted behind behind the fort. They were actually a 40 caliber rapid fire Armstrong gun and there were two of them that were refurbished and remounted for display. Uh, so it's a it's a great great thing to go check out really gives you an idea of really what they were preparing for and what's unique about Fort Tesoto is these guns were never fired at an enemy in in anger or in battle so if they fired these weapons it was just for practice purposes and just for uh, practicing really if they if they did get invaded uh, but we're walking around here. A lot of the different barracks inside there uh, are original to when the fort was in operation. So there's different ones that where people would, would sleep. There was barracks. There were bunks. There were all sorts of things. And there is an area where you can walk inside and see a ton of pictures. It was closed for some reason. But there, normally there's an area where they've got a lot of pictures, historical pictures. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thing to view. It, it is all concrete 
concrete, so you don't want to go in there yelling and screaming because it echoes pretty bad and it can it can get pretty brutal if you're in there with some kids that are a little bit louder, like maybe mine would be. But you can see that the mortars right there, they keep them in really good shape. We've never seen them that, that freshly painted, so it was really cool to see them. Obviously, some of the components have been removed uh, just to minimize it, uh, but a lot of the pieces are there, and it really gives you an idea. I mean, 12-inch mortar shell is loaded into this, and it had a range of miles upon miles. And the fact that these are the only type of its kind that are on display like this, and you can go and visit these totally for free is a really, really unique opportunity within, within the state of Florida. So this site right here, we're just walking by some of the uh, various information. It was during the Spanish-American War, as I said. Uh, there's a lot of really cool information. We'll make sure to post that in the description below as far as things that you can, you can see and read about the fort. Uh, a lot of really cool history there. Uh, you can definitely feel, feel the energy of the area and, and really you know, how powerful this fort was intended to be if it did ever have to be basically defended at any point. So these are the other two, they're four total. So they're all kind of mounted in different, different positions. Uh, you can go over, a pretty cool part is you can go look through it and have the kids stand on one side, uh, take a picture like that, that's what we normally do. Uh, but a lot of these are original as far as the walls are concerned, and they've got a lot of history around there uh, and information about the artil artillery that it would use and about the gun itself. This was actually a placard basically saying that these are the only type of its kind that are on display today. So I definitely suggest going to Fort DeSoto if you're in the area. A great place to go check out. A lot of really cool things to see. And go take a walk around the fort. Go check out the gift shop. Uh, there's Go check out the beaches. There's plenty to do. So we always have a great time. Highly, highly recommend. So we currently we found both a baby uh, manatee and a dolphin. dolphin. We Manatee. both named them after Pokemon, Lapras and Lord. We like Pokemon, so. We all like different Pokemon. Lapras. Lapras is the dolphin. dolphin. The whale lord is the baby manatee. It's hard to see the manatee. The manatee barely is coming up now. Yeah, so the manatee will be mostly over there. We've seen the dolphin so a the bunch. Dolphin we haven't really so But on um, Lapras, is good. it usually comes up. Lapras is the dolphin. That was the dolphin. Will it come up to us? There's. So we're just about to leave, so we're trying to. We would give them. Um, we have 30 minutes late. High fives. We're With 30 minutes late, that's fine. 30 minutes late before we should. We, we're supposed to be checked up on. So we just. We just don't. We're, don't tell them that. We're just able to get. um. So, so we're. We're about leaving. We have like a few more minutes to film this, so yeah. All right, welcome back. We're we're on a Sunday. Uh, we're getting packed up, so we uh, we didn't we showed you a little bit of footage. We saw uh, the tide was up, so we we saw several dolphins out swimming right behind our campsite. Uh, saw a manatee, so the boys should have filmed uh, quite a bit of that stuff while I was packing up. So we're currently waiting in line to drain the tanks on the camper because this is not a full hookup site. So they've got water and electric. Uh, but there is no sewer hookup, but they do have two uh, drain uh, stations, so uh, you can go and drain. Normally we do this at home, uh, but you know, we we decided we might stay in the area, so we're just going to get that done with now. So uh, just to kind of recap Fort DeSoto campground, there is a dolphin right there. Uh, just to recap Fort DeSoto campground, we've been coming here for a long time. We've camped here in tents, we've camped here in campers. Uh, we've camped here probably more than any campground yep. that we've ever gone to. So really any of the scenarios, whether it's, you know, unless you camp right now, which is it's hot right now in July, uh, in a tent, that would be probably pretty miserable. Uh, but, you know, the right time of year, it, it's, a, it's a great place, great campground. 
Uh, there's tons of things to do. We showed you the Skyway. We showed you the beach area. There's also a ferry that goes out to Shell Island, uh, and that's a kind of remote island that you can go to. It's only accessible by uh, the ferry put on by Hubbard's Marina. Uh, you can pay the ticket, get out there. Uh, the ferry does have a bathroom on it, and they do sell drinks and snacks, but once you get out there, there's no facilities. So you can also do that as well. They also offer camping. That would just be just bringing whatever you can fit on your back to go camping there uh, for the night. Uh, you do have to have a permit for that, so they've got information on the website. We'll make sure we post the link in the description below. Uh, but there's tons of stuff to do here. So this is, this is probably one of the top campgrounds to go to in the area. Uh, there's lots to do, uh, lots of fun activities between the store and there's a couple of playgrounds here on site that you can go to. Uh, plenty of bike trails, plenty of walking, uh, plenty of beach area. Uh, I mean, the, the beach area is so big that you won't see someone else. So that's the good thing about it. So fishing, tons of fishing opportunities here. Uh, paddle boards, kayaks, not really like a swimming kind of area. You don't want to just go jump in the water and go swimming. Uh, but you, you can take your paddle boards, your kayaks. They do rent them as well uh, in the area if you want but uh, tons of stuff to do here and then you're so close to downtown St. Pete uh, that you can go over uh, go check out some of the different markets that are going on uh, go check out some of the stores uh, and then you've got Don Cesar which is kind of a cool hotel to see uh, so definitely highly recommend Fort DeSoto uh, we come here quite often we'll be here again uh, you know we're always looking for different sites uh, grabbing ones that we see become available uh, to, to you know, but our recommendation is if you're tent camping, obviously area one's the only one you can go to. If you have a dog, area three is the one to go to. Uh, we prefer area two. The, the bugs are not as bad in area two as opposed to area three, uh, but that we did see some noceums, uh, so they definitely will be out. So make sure that you do bring spray and things like that. Uh, so we're gonna go and get these tanks drained and go have some more fun.